Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy Enjoy the the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. How are you? I'm doing well. How's your deck? Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh we are making uh steady progress well that's good not not fast progress but steady progress. yeah well that's kind of how construction projects go right yes i i may have said this in the, in the last episode but there's a lot of standing around head scratching and pointing and hmm a lot of Hmm. <laughs> in fact my son is you know ben's helping us build the deck and um he um is a little critical of us and that we don't have a better plan um i don't know what his problem is i sketched it all out on a piece of graph paper well <laughs> that's better than yes. the cocktail napkin that my parents sketched it out on <laughs> uh, in 1964 um i think that works graph paper is very <laughs> official <laughs> yes. So I said to him, I think it's, uh, he's been gone Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he went on a backpacking trip. But um, on Tuesday, he was a little irritable and <laughs> a, a little accusatory about all of this. And I pointed out to me, if you, even if you had an architect or a engineer or somebody official, mm-hmm. you know, that knows how to do these things in AutoCAD or something, d- do plans for it. There's unforeseen things that you have to deal with, like tree roots. Right. You know, going down 24 inches for your concrete footing, and there's a big uh, 10-inch tree root, you mm-hmm. know, that you have to get rid of. Mm-hmm. And and um, irrigation system that you have to work around. And, and um, so, anyway, but we are making progress. And so, all of the understructure for the actual deck is complete. And now we have to uh, build the stairs that go down so i I think i've described this but the the backyard is half patio and um and there's flower beds there too Mm -hmm. but sort of half patio and then the other half is the the living space is patio and half of its deck and so now you need stairs to go down to the patio and so that's um a lot of head scratching took place on tuesday Mm -hmm. about um the the stairs But we've got it figured out, and there's a solution. There's always a solution. The decking material is Ipe wood, and that was delivered, I believe, on last Monday, I think. I can't remember. Oh, last Friday, the 24th, it was delivered. It's beautiful. I posted on Instagram that it seems like a very small pile of wood, (laughs) considering what I paid for it. (laughs) I help as much as I can. Um, but my brother's been out there every day, either working with me or working with Ben. And um, on Tuesday after Ben left, and we were sitting having iced tea, kind of cooling down because it's been very hot too, which doesn't help yeah. uh, with deck building. And um, I said to my brother about how he was so positive about like, oh, there's a solution for everything. It's just a problem that we'll find the solution. And I said to him, how can you be so positive? And he said, what are my options? <laughs> I have no other option but to be positive. That is a so, very good um, way to think about lots mm-hmm. of aspects of life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What are the choices? Yep. So anyway. Yep. Um, so we are making progress. I was, you know, I, I, I mean, honestly, I did not realize how long it was going to take. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was going to be a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Um but, you know, we are not experts at this. We have to figure things out. There's a lot of trips to the computer to mm-hmm. look at stuff on Google, mm-hmm. you know, and YouTube. Um, I I learned that the, the Ipe wood, that you have to seal the ends of it, the cut end. Oh. And so you have to get this paraffin-based um, sealant that you put on there. And I had to order that. And I had to order the all of the... Um, the low voltage lighting. I had to research that and transformers. I've learned a lot. Um, and then we had to gather all the tools because we don't have any tools. Mm-hmm. I don't have saws and 
chop saws and table saws yeah. and so i have to say it's kind of fun it's exciting and um i'm yeah uh, oh and then i met my neighbor na- i have new neighbors that are renting the house i i don't think i mentioned this but i have new neighbors up the alley that are are renting and i ran into them and she works at san michelle winery oh nice and she told me she can I, I mentioned that I said when I'm, I was just joking, when this deck is done, I want to have a a party and celebrate the deck. And I said, I think I need to have champagne, you know, because, you know, when we ever, we, when Kim and I finish a sweater, we get a bottle of champagne. I said, if I finish this deck, I get a case of sam- champagne. And she works at the winery and she said, she'll get me a case of champagne at a 50% <laughs> discount. Woo-hoo. So enough about the deck. Tell me what's going on with you. Well... I finished some things. Oh, yay. I'm very excited. This is more exciting than anything that's happening in the rest of my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is all very ordinary. But I finished my tea, my Marianne's cardigan Ooh, that exciting. I made into a tea. Mm-hmm. In fact, not only is it finished with the knitting and crocheting, but I actually even found the button that I wanted and sewed the button on. So it's like, really finished Mm -hmm. like actually totally i could put it on and wear it somewhere finished very nice exciting yeah so we don't have to talk about it anymore i know i know (laughs) (laughs) and i really like it i i like how it fits i made it longer than the pattern called Uh for and then i put a border crochet border on the bottom that was a I have to say that was a thing. This whole this whole tea has been a thing. Yeah. Um, everything I've done, I've had to kind of rethink. and But the, the seams look good on the side now that it's washed. I had to put the border on the sleeves. I had to rip out a couple of times before I could get the right, like the right tension. So it wasn't flaring out or mm-hmm. rolling, you know, because the knit was stockinette. And then you put the crochet on. And if it's too many stitches of crochet, then it just was rolling, just mm-hmm. like stockinette would roll. So I had to pick up stitches differently than what the pattern called for and get the right gauge. And then the same thing on the bottom. But once I once I got it and I, you know, it was working, it's like, oh, this is so nice. I love this tea. So I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of it, I think, if I ever go anywhere again. <laughs> <laughs> We should probably talk about, um, maybe a little bit later in the episode, we can talk about what it feels like to knit things that, how do you get inspired to knit things when you know you're not going to go anywhere to wear them? Right. So, but I really like it. And I I tried it on. I like the way it looks. I'm looking at your pictures on Ravelry. I don't have any finished pictures. I just see the the picture blocking. Yeah. 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 It looks nice. I don't have any pictures of me wearing it, Mm -hmm. but I like the fit a lot. It's nice. Yeah. It's really pretty. And I'm glad to be done. Mm -hmm. The pattern was perfectly fine. There was nothing I didn't like about the pattern. I just kind of got stuck in miles of stockinette Mm -hmm. with size three needles and very skinny yarn. And and you had to repeat a lot of those miles of stockinette, which is Mm -hmm. is hard. Yeah. Yeah, And then I had to repeat some of the, it wasn't miles of crochet, but I had to repeat some of the crochet. Mm -hmm. And and then I, of course, you know, made my life more complicated by deciding to put crochet at the bottom. Mm Mm-hmm. Made my life more complicated by deciding I wanted it longer. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. It was all of my own doing. But anyway, I'm really happy to be finished with it. And it's very pretty. And I really like it. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really a nice addition to my, uh, to my sweater drawer. So, so yeah, I'm finished with that. And then I think I was almost finished with Robert's socks mm-hmm. with the big toe. In mm-hmm. fact, I, I I posted a picture, finished picture of them for the episode artwork, I think. Um, even though I wasn't finished when we talked, I was almost finished. So those yeah. are done. That's not huge news. And then I finished my uh, Columbia. I worked really hard because I wanted to have it finished for today. The Columbia yarn that I was spinning is finished. Oh, right. So, and 
So do you have a picture of that on your page? No, I haven't. I'll put one up before we okay. before we um before we post the episode. It's just it's white yarn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it it turned out really nicely though, I think. I didn't my the bag okay, so honesty in honesty about my record keeping. I thought I had really good record keeping because I spent some time, I don't know two years ago after the fair Mm -hmm. going through all my fleas and labeling it all and putting Mm -hmm. how many pounds it was. And then as I would use it, I was, you know, remarking it, like cross out the amount and reweighing it and marking the amount. And so it said I had three pounds of this Columbia fleece. So of that three pounds, I took out about roughly half to wash. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I carded about half of that, okay. which would have left me with about three quarters of a pound. Yeah, would have been about three quarters of a pound, about 12 ounces. Mm-hmm. I only got 150 grams of yarn from that. Mm-hmm. So I didn't weigh any of it along the way. I just was like, oh, I have three pounds, half of three pounds. It's about a pound and a half. Okay, wash it. Card half of that. That's about three quarters of a pound. I knew there's going to be some loss from the washing, mm-hmm. you know, some some carding waste, some washing out of lanolin weight. But I think I didn't keep good records because I only got 150 grams mm-hmm. of this skein, so um, which is only about five ounces out of what I thought was 12 ounces. Wow, that's a difference. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I just didn't keep good records. I might okay. not have had three pounds of it. Okay. I'll have to, I'll, once I go further on this, um, with this fleece, I'll see like how much did I really wash and how much did I really card? Because mm-hmm. maybe my idea of half and then half again is not quite accurate. You know, I could have, I could have estimated it looks like half, but it's mm-hmm. only a third. Yeah. Or something. So I don't know. But um, but it's really pretty. What weight do you think it is? It's fingering. I have 569 meters, 622 yards in okay. 153 grams. So it's it's about fingering weight. It's really nice. It's fluffy. Mm-hmm. I whacked it on the countertop a lot. Um, in fact, I could rewind the skein because it's a little bit stuck. Mm-hmm. to itself in places when I was uh, counting the yardage. Mm-hmm. I noticed that it was a little bit stuck to itself in places. Not badly, not like it was totally felted, but, you know, you can see, I mean, I it did full a little bit. Um, but it's it's nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might dye it, but it's, it's softer than I expected it to be. I think mm-hmm. I talked about that last time. I, I wanted to call it finished just because I don't want to commit to spinning the rest of it right now. Right. But I may actually add to that project and spin more of it so that I have more than, you know, more than 600 yards. Mm -hmm. If I had 1,200 yards, I could, you know, maybe make a cardigan or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm I'm not committing to that. (laughs) (laughs) Not going to commit to that just Mm -hmm. yet. But I'm glad to be finished with that project, that spinning project. Um, so I have, th- yeah, three finished things. My my Marianne's cardigan, which I made as a tee, Robert Socks, and my my fleece project. Mm-hmm. So so you know what that means, Marsha, when yep. you finish all that stuff. Well, I know what it means for me, but for you it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't mean champagne. I mean, no. I get to start something start new. Start something new, right. Yeah. So I started the the cardigan that I wanted to make with the lamb fleece, the tar- brown targy lamb fleece. And I did choose the dark and stormy pattern by Thea Coleman. Okay, let me go look so at that. I've got your page it, up here. It's nice. I think I updated my page to put the pattern in, but I haven't taken a picture of it yet. Okay. I, got I see through, your, your swatch is there. Yeah, I got yeah. through one, um, one repeat of the cables. So, you know, it starts at the neck. It's top down. So it starts at the neck. I got through one repeat of the cables. In my, like, fifth row, Mm -hmm. I missed one of the little zigzags. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought, 
and I didn't see it until maybe the ninth row. And I thought, you know what? It's going to be under my collar. It's a mm-hmm. little tiny zig. It's not the main cable. It's just a little edge piece. Mm-hmm. I thought, and it's one of those things where normally I would have said, well, I haven't gotten very much far into it. I'm not that invested. I, I'll just rip it out and start over. But no, I looked at it and I thought, yeah, no one's going to see it. It's under my collar. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. So. So I have a question looking at the pattern, because I actually have this in my favorites, too. It it's, uh, hits about waist length. Mm-hmm. Are you going to make it that length, or are you going to make it longer? Or I think I'll make it a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on how much yardage I still, you know, how much yardage mm-hmm. I have. Mm-hmm. I should have enough to make it a little bit, a little bit longer. I, I'd like it to be, I normally like things to be a little bit longer. Because so, this is, you know, the even model. I'm short. It's the model. It's sort of above her belt. Kind of. Yeah the the pattern talks about it as coming just to the top of your of your jeans. Mm-hmm. I mean, it depends which jeans you're wearing, right? But I think I'll want it a little bit longer. So, and I have enough. I think I have enough yarn that I could go that I could go longer. So, and then there's a couple of people. Well, one person that I favored. So I don't know if you know about this, Marsha, and maybe our listeners don't know about this either. Um, when you are making a project, mm-hmm. if you go into the project pages and you favorite people's projects, mm-hmm. then they show up on your project page. Oh. And so, so like... So did you favorite someone on the theater? Yeah, because there are this. some that um, that had some good comments. And that's the thing that makes it nice is if you oh, see I good see comments. Here. I see here in the lower right corner. Yes. Uh, it has. Related it's, favorites, it's mm-hmm. called. And so the one by knitting, there's two of them that are by knitting Suzanne. And I think she made like four or five of them, Mm -hmm. but she had some helpful comments about the short rows for the collar. Mm -hmm. And so I favorited hers and then I favorited some others. So now I have them sort of sitting on my project page to go and reread what it was that I got out of their project notes Mm -hmm. that I want to make sure that I take note of. Yeah. So, Yeah, I read a lot of, I read on this one, I read a lot of project notes and it's an older pattern. And like in the original version of the pattern, um, the cables weren't mirrored. It's like you have the ca- two cables down the back and they were just the same cable. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people in their project pages mirrored the cables so they mm-hmm. were opposite. Mm-hmm. And so the new version of the pattern has those cables mirrored. Okay. And there's some other adjustments that Thea Coleman has made to the pattern since the original, you know, since she originally published it, which I think was in like 2016. Oh, no, it came out in 2010. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a it's a 20-year-old pattern or a 10-year-old pattern. And so she's made some adjustments to the pattern since, since some of the projects that I read, I noticed. Um, but it is really nice that you can favorite, like when you're looking through project pages, at a pattern you think you might do, favorite the ones that have helpful comments, and then you don't have to go looking for them again. Yeah. They'll just be sitting at the bottom of your project page. I use that a lot. I'm looking at um, Knitting Suzanne, her uh, her photographs. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's cool, her photographs, she has like little arrows pointing to things. I just yeah. figured out who this is. Do you know who Knitting Suzanne is? No, it's oh, um, it's the, the the woman you met at Stitches. Yes, that um, she's okay. a master knitter and and she has okay. all these really good videos on um, oh right uh, on YouTube. Okay, I just made the connect. Small world, huh? That is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is. Suzanne okay. Bryan is her name, and okay. she has patterns and. Yeah, and she has all kinds of YouTube videos and right. I remember yeah. sitting and talking to her at Stitches. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, good. Yeah, she she um, had some helpful tips about the call the shawl collar mm-hmm. and where to put your short rows to make the shawl collar fit better. 
Okay. So, so yeah, I'm I'm excited about this. It's going pretty well. It's raglan sleeve. Um, I'm right now. I'm increasing. You know, it's a V neck, so mm -hmm. I'm increasing as I'm going down the V neck, and I'm just to the point where I've increased enough that I now, as I go down, I'll still continue to increase a little bit, but I'm starting. There's a little, a little zigzag cable detail along each of the the edges, mm -hmm. the front edges before the button band. And I'm about at the place where I need to start those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's making progress and it's kind of fun. I have to admit that I don't feel like I understand cables very well. Mm -hmm. Like I follow the pattern. Right. And I look at my chart and then I have to go, Oh, this, I had made all these notes it's not like I can say, oh, this is the cable that goes this way, so this is what I need to do. I need to hold it in back or hold it in front. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that, like, logic. The cable logic is so far eluding me. Well, by the time you finish the sweater, you'll have it figured out because... I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to kind of have to kind of sit down and, like, think about, mm -hmm. think about, like, like, what I did with charts when I was knitting lace was, like, the slant... The slant to the right, mm -hmm. like a forward slash, that's a knit two together. Mm -hmm. And the way I remembered it was that it's like the slanted part of the number two. Mm -hmm. And so that would help me remember, oh, that's a knit two together, the right leaning increase. Right. And then the left leaning increase, um, slip, slip, knit. And so the, the diagonal of an S slants to the left. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I kind of like, okay, yeah, I, they like clicked in my mind. So I don't have to like, oh, what does a symbol mean? And yeah, you know, it became just like natural. I know what that symbol means. Mm -hmm. Like I know what the number five means, you mm -hmm. know, but I don't understand the symbols for the cables and they don't, the logic of holding it in the front or holding it in the back is, is, um, something I still need to kind of wrap my brain around. Like, how yeah. do I know which is which? So, yeah. It, you've it, done more cable. Yeah. And I, and I, I will say, I, I agree with you. I, when I first start, I have to look at the, um, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. Like what is the it? Legend. The key, the legend yeah. or the key about what everything is. I have to look at that, but the more you do it, you uh, you um yeah, yeah it makes it makes more sense um, you get the you get the logic of which one's going left which one's going yeah. right you can read your yeah. knitting mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. yeah so anyway that's where i am um, okay with my my projects very exciting finished projects that's always exciting so is that yeah. that's everything then uh, everything that i have actually finished and actually started i have okay. some stuff in the plans but i can talk about that later okay well, I have finished projects. Well, Yay. I guess, I, yeah, it's a finished project. So I finally finished The Summer Fjord by Trin and Ellie. And just to remind people, it's the Quince and Co. Sparrow in three colors. And Kelly, I was very brave. And I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I did hand wash it because I just let it soak mm -hmm. um, in a... Uh, little soapy water, you know, for, so I don't know, I let it soak for an hour or something. And then I, I wrung it out, you know, with in towels. And then I put it in the dryer with the towels, the, the wet towels. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And I made myself, I stood there in front of the dryer and I physically had to make myself put it in the dryer. This is the feeling probably people have when they're on an airplane, they're going to go skydiving and they stand on the edge of the airplane and they have to physically make <laughs> themselves jump out of the airplane. I don't know. That's an exaggeration. But the idea of putting hand knits in the dryer is so foreign because you think of wool, right? But this mm -hmm. is linen. And so it has to go in the dryer. And Linen likes the dryer. It likes the dryer. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash it again and put it in the dryer again. Um, because I kept, um, I put it in there pretty dry. I had, you know, how you roll it up in a towel and you mm -hmm. stand on it. And so it's yeah. pretty dry when I put it in there. I think I'm going to do it again because it's kind of big. Um, and I think it needs to go into the dryer again. And me, I need to be more 
a- aggressive with it. Mm-hmm. I might even I put it on kind of like you a low even heat. Wa- you could even wash it in hot water and dry it on high. I know. And this is what I think <laughs> I might do because I washed it in cold water and I put it in sort of a low temp in the dryer. And I mm-hmm. think now what I need to do is be uh, a bit more um, assertive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, uh, so, and the reason, what I did is just to, I think I talked about this in the last episode is, um, the, the pattern has drop sleeves, kind of a drop, yeah, a drop mm-hmm. sleeve. And then it has, when you're finished the body, then you go back and you pick up and just do ribbing on the sleeves. So, you don't. and when I, I wasn't sure how long they were going to be, they're plenty long. So I decided not to add any sleeve length of Mm -hmm. the stockinette just to go ahead and do the ribbing so now the ribbing is a little different than the washed tee so that's another reason why i need to wash it is so that the ribbing on the sleeves now matches the rest of this of the sweater but i wore it the other day i wore it two or three days it's very comfortable linen is amazingly comfortable Mm -hmm. fabric to wear i think and and we've had some really hot weather as i say it's not going to be 90 today so um but i am going to throw it in the washing machine again and and, well, for the first time, because I didn't actually. So, Kelly, you yes. think I should wash it on hot water? You can. Mm-hmm. And throw it in the, the only, hot dryer. The only thing about washing it in hot water is that um, linen has a hard time taking up dye. Mm-hmm. And so if you have something that's really bright mm-hmm. that you're worried about the dye bleeding out. Mm-hmm then hot water is probably not the best. Okay. Because you might lose some of the you might lose some of the dye. Ooh. But but otherwise no, there's nothing wrong with washing linen in hot water. So I did when I washed it just in not ice cold water but cool water. Mm-hmm. Um it did lose a lot of color, a lot of dye. Okay. Now it doesn't look like it's faded. I just think that yeah. it ha- had a lot of excess dye in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll think I may just soak it in, in tepid water and then put it in the dryer mm-hmm. um or yeah. you could even i mean you could put it in the washer with you know with just warm water mm-hmm. and um and then put it in the dryer okay if you don't want to use hot because yeah that's one of the things about about linen um is that it it's hard to get it to take mm-hmm. dye really saturated mm-hmm. and so oftentimes there's excess dye when you you know, to make the to get the color, there's actually excess dye that rinses out, and sometimes that dye, you know, it's not like it fades; it's just extra. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, the only thing is, one of the colors is white, and I don't know that I would have mm. to worry about oh, the yeah. color coming out of the blue mm-hmm. and the gold and attaching to the white. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, Probably not. Okay. Um, but yeah, you might want to just. Um, I think what I'm going to do warmer, is uh, is cool. wet it and send it through a hotter dryer. Yeah, yeah. first time, and then uh, that's, go on from there. I think that's probably safer. Yeah, I'm going to ease into this, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go crazy, Marcia. Don't go yeah, crazy. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I finished. I've been working on a pair of socks for my brother, and out of the Arna and Carlos sock yarn, and. Uh, I finished the first one and I've cast on and I've finished the ribbing and maybe four inches of the second one. I just want to talk about this yarn. And this is the, I've talked about this before, but it's a, you get just a big ball of yarn and then you pull from the center and there's a, a bright yellow yarn that you pull out from the center until you hit. And that yellow you throw away, start with your color. In this case, it's red and start your sock from the top down so the first color that appears is red and so you do all the ribbing until the red ends and the first the next color that shows up is kind of a orange then you start your stockinette as soon as you get to the next color change that's where you start your um, heel flap um, when you're done with the heel flap it's amazing but the next color starts as you uh, pick up stitches for the gusset okay i didn't realize that that the colors were actually designed to be connected to changes in what you do for the pattern. Yes. And it's okay, kind so of it's a, different than an ordinary uh, 
an ordinary self-striping or printed yarn right. that just has a pat like a fair isle pattern or something. Okay. Right. And it just randomly shows it, it just randomly mm-hmm. cha- well, I can't say randomly, but you know it's not I yeah, it's know. not. It's just it's just patterning. It's not connected to the parts of a sock. But this right. one, the design is actually connected yeah. to the parts of your sock. That's interesting. And I and I don't remember. I'm besides, I'm taking a. I'm reaching down and grabbing my bag. When you take the band off, I think that there's instructions. Oh, there are instructions, but I could not read them because they're in. <laughs> um, in German, I believe. Oh, okay. Because uh, this is like a, a regia. Oh, no, wait a minute. Here it is. Okay, it is regia. I'm sorry. I take that back. There is English. And it does tell okay. you in English how to do it on the back of the band. Um, but what I did is I watched um, Arna and Carlos have a YouTube video about this mm-hmm. yarn. Okay. And sent, and they because it is their um, uh, color, they selected the colors. So um, they have a YouTube video about it. So that's what I watched. Okay. I'm just going to make a comment about this. <laughs> and this is not... Um, okay, it's going to sound like a criticism. I don't mean it to sound like a criticism. <laughs> when you, um, so you now you're, you know, you've do, done all the heel work, everything, you do the gusset, and now you're just going to start doing stockinette for the bottom of the foot till you get down mm-hmm. to the toe. I had a little bit of a freak out because about two inches from where you finish the gusset, you know, you've done all your decreases mm-hmm. for the gusset, the color changes. To red. It's now been a blue for the foot. It changes to red. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's my toe. <laughs> but my foot's only like, like I don't know, so, four inches so, long or something. I like, how am so I going to do this? So Mark and Robert have the same big toe sauce. <laughs> so I will post pictures of this. It has, so it, the, the, from the, where the color changes to red to the end of my toe is about five inches. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'm exaggerating. I think it's five inches. Yeah. And so I don't think it's very elegant. If a sock can be yeah. elegant, I right. I thought the color change was going to happen closer to where you start the, the toe shape, decreases. The toe mm-hmm. decreases. And it it looks odd, too, because you start with red, and then there's a, a mixture of orange and kind of a gray or brown. It's not fair aisle, but say, you know, it's like fair isle you know it's yeah mixed like kind of, spots of and stuff, then you yeah. do some striping and then you go into the blue then you go back to that orange and brown then you go to red then you go back to orange and brown and then you do blue and you go straight to red i don't know why they didn't have the orange and brown between there's mm-hmm. orange and brown between the red and the blue everywhere except when you get to the toe and, and that seems like odd a, to me yeah so i'm if Arna and Carlos ever listen to the podcast, <laughs> please, please let them listen to the podcast because I like them so much. It's just sort of odd. I <laughs> That's not a criticism. It's just odd. So, yeah. but the thing is, maybe, you know, it doesn't matter because it's in the shoe. It doesn't matter. But it's yeah. just, yeah. Um, they've gone to so much work to get these colors to line up and work out. It's odd yeah. that it's like they gave up on the top. So many knitters, oh, we give done. up on Let's the toe. Let's just put the red in. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I like the yarn, and it's and I and the colors are just you know crazy, like red and orange, and this uh, yeah, really bright. periwinkle and uh, kind of a sky blue and super bright, which. Um, and I, I will say the photo, all my photographs don't show the blue like the robin's egg blue that it really is. It always sort of shows up as gray, mm-hmm. but um, they're very colorful, which is exactly what you know Mark wants: colorful socks. Yeah. Like Robert yeah. wants colorful socks. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, so anyway, that's enough about the socks. The other thing I finished was the my spinning of the Huckleberry Knits and the Socked In Farms roving that I had. I finished that, and I, I, Kelly, I. I have no idea how you spin fingering weight. I, <laughs> I cannot get there. I'm going to be generous and say it's DK or light worsted. It's probably worsted, but it's, um, um, yeah, I don't seem to be get any finer than yeah. that. But um, anyway, I would say. Well, because you, first of all, you did tell me that you, that you don't ever use the smallest swirl. Right. Which I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, 
So that's that's probably part of it. Um, I have about 850 yards. Um, I think it's beautiful. And, and to remind people what I did, the huckleberry knits was uh, variegated, you know, painted. And the Stockton Farms was um, an aqua color, solid or semi-solid. Your yarn turned out really pretty. I think it's beautiful. And so what I did too, I had... Uh, eight ounces of the variegated and four ounces of the solid. So I did two singles of the variegated and tried to do the fractal spinning on that. And then the Mm -hmm. one single of the aqua color, I think it's really pretty. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with 850 yards. I was thinking of a vest. Kim, since we've been talking a lot about knitting and projects, she's been watching me spin this whole thing since she's living with me. We we're talking about. She said you can you could combine it with something else, and I don't. Do you remember um, when you're at? I believe it was at Stitches, at um, um, Sincere Sheep. We each bought a skein mm-hmm. of Cormo, mm-hmm. and I bought mine in kind of an aqua color. It matches it perfectly. So I was thinking oh, I good. could yeah. maybe combine those two and make a striped something. That's one thought. Yeah. What weight is that? Do it's you know? um, sport. No, okay. wait a minute. No, wait a minute. I take that back. What is it? It's DK, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it might work. Yeah, um, that would work really well. The other thought I had is the the my hand spun has bits of brown in it, like a charcoal and brown in it. And mm-hmm. when I combined it, I had I just went down and pulled out yarns, even though they weren't the correct weight, but the colors were interesting. It looked really pretty. It completely changes the yarn when I combine it with something that's dark. Uh, it, um, okay. So it's because the, the aqua is very much the same. It's very matchy-matchy. But if you mm-hmm. actually combine it with something that's um, the brown, or uh, and, and when I say brown, a very cool, it's more charcoal brown kind of color. When you combine it with something that matches that, it, it changes the look of the yarn. It looks less... Um, aqua it looks more it pulls Mm. out the brown color it's interesting i don't know if i will and i thought well i have so many fleeces that are in that color in that tone it might be kind of fun to instead of uh, combining it with a machine made yarn it'd be fun to combine it with another hand some hand spun yeah like the natural colored wool Um, the other thing too it has very long color repeats so Whatever I make, I'm going to have to make the decision. Do I want to have those long color repeats or do I break it up in some way? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the you color could repeats even, would be nice. but you Well, and you could even do it like if you did it with a hand spun. It looks like I'm looking at a picture. It looks kind of coffee color. Mm-hmm. The brown. Yeah. Like like the dark brown of a black fleece that's mm-hmm. not really black. Yeah. 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 Um, you could even do like the there's one pattern. I'm not saying you would make this particular pattern, but there's that top, I think it's Vera Valamaki, that has the, like, stripes of one row and one row. Mm-hmm. You know, like, one row stripes of color. That would be pretty, too. Like, one or two one or two rows of the variegated and then one or two rows of the natural yeah. brown color would be pretty. And then sometimes there's patterns, you know, where you do, like, a slip stitch. To sort of break. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. would be kind of interesting too. Mm-hmm. Um, I have lots of time to think about it, you know. Yeah. But that's done and that was, it was kind of, it was fun to finish it. Um, yeah, it uh, turned out nice. And then I. And let oh. me just um, check check with you. You you said this was about DK. I mean, I know this isn't a combo spin, but your combo spins, your other hand spins, what were they? I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, oh. <laughs> just give me a moment here. <laughs> I just curious. Um, yeah. I, I okay, so it. I know the first one I did was worsted for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, I did it on size 7 needles. And let me see what the gauge is for this. Oh, worsted weight, it says. Okay. It's a worsted weight sweater. Um, and it looks like your one that you haven't spun yet that has the cashmere and silk in it, the green one. Mm-hmm. It looks like that one is about DK weight. It's about 251 yards. The one that I half. haven't knit with yet? That yeah. One? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The one you haven't knit with, it looks like it's about 250 yards in four ounces. Yeah. And so that would be about DK weight, I think. And I'm looking at the... 
Okay, so the second one I did, I did a Heidi Kermeyer Simple Summer Tweed Top Down V Neck, and that says it's Aaron Weight. Um, okay. But I don't think it was Aaron Weight. I think it was more worsted. More worsted. And then I know with uh, um, uh, my third combo spin, the green one, I know I tried really hard to spin finer. Um, yeah, and that one looks like about a DK from the calculation. Yeah. And so does this one that you that you have. Okay. With 800. What do I have? 880, I think, yard, 883 yards, 11.65 yeah. ounces. Yeah, so if you take that 883 yards divided by your 11.65 ounces and then times that by four, so that's about 300 yards. So, yeah, it's finer. You're getting finer. Woohoo! Not that that's necessarily <laughs> the goal, uh, you know. Not that that's necessarily the goal. Well, I I um, want to I want to try. But that's what you you know, I'm always trying, trying for, to. Yeah. So, um, since we're doing this, then again, this is not good podcasting to be doing all this. But the one, the other one that I just finished too was the Camel Merino Silk. Oh. And oh, I don't have anything about yardage or ounces. Oh, okay. never mind. And I have it put away. So never mind. I can't. It's okay. not in my. Um, but you can look at that. and I can look at that out. and figure it out. Because mm -hmm. I kind of think, I mean, you can look up a chart online, but I kind of think like, okay, 220 yards in four ounces is a worsted. And so the more yardage above that you get, and then 400 yards. Yeah, 400 yards in four ounces is sock weight. Okay. So in between 220 and 400 per four ounces, you have DK and Sport. Okay. Closer to 400 yards, you've got, you know, Sport, and closer to the 220, you have, you have DK. Okay. I mean, you can actually look up actual numbers mm -hmm. online to see, but that's kind of what I do in my head when I'm calculating. Okay. To see, it doesn't. That doesn't always. I, I'm just gonna say, that doesn't actually always fit with hand spun because sometimes hand spun is dense. Mm -hmm. So so for people who are who are you know finding that that's not really, you know the, the look of the yarn isn't looking like or it isn't weighing the same, it just seems denser your hand spun. It's it a lot of times hand spun is more dense. Yeah. And sometimes it's the difference in fiber. Um, but sometimes if you if you spin short forward draw, you know, the inchworm style, mm -hmm. you're really squishing those fibers together. Right. Right. And then when you ply, if you're really pinching things, mm -hmm. you're really squishing everything together and you're squishing all the air out of your yarn. And that can make a really dense yarn, which sometimes is what you want. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's not what you want and you need a little bit of a lighter touch on the spinning yeah. or... Um, or often on the plying end of it is what makes it really is what can make a, a really dense like your some of your early hand spun the one that you made bend those socks yes. <laughs> the Fourth of July socks or the Patriot socks or whatever um, you know in the early stages of spinning sometimes that that density just comes from like too heavy of a grip yeah um, the um the, the so those socks were like the third or fourth thing that I had spun so they're not too they're very dense but not mm -hmm. as bad as uh the very first yarn that I spun and I found it um cuz I saved it and, and we we had this conversation before where some people say oh your first step just throw it out it's no good it's good to save it so you know yeah, how yeah. how much you've improved but I found it as I was going down there looking at my other hand spun maybe there's something that I could combine with this one that I just finished and I found the the second one I did, no, I'm sorry, it was the first one I did, and it's like rope. <laughs> it feels super heavy, yeah, and really dense, yeah, super dense. It feels like, uh, like that, uh, like nylon rope or something, very, mm -hmm. very heavy and dense. And then I, I think the second one I spun, I made a hat for Ben, and it has no elect elasticity we found it and he was trying it on and it's like <laughs> yeah. it, there's no elasticity to it all and it's wool but there's no yeah, spring yeah, and yeah. the you know the hat weighs 12 ounces i'm exaggerating but it it's heavy because mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. yeah i usually do long draw it's i find yeah. it's faster too than the inchworm yeah method, yeah you know yeah um, i i like mine is it's kind of a combination i like backward draw or i'll do like a supported long draw mm -hmm. yeah 
I will say you get a lot more lightness. That's not necessarily always what you want. Sometimes you want, you want that smoothness of, you know, smoothing everything out, Mm -hmm. but you just have to be aware that sometimes that smoothing out actually turns into compression. Yeah. That can make those calculations. There's nothing wrong with it. It just makes those calculations of, you know, 220 yards in four ounces to be not accurate. Mm -hmm. And the fiber can make a difference too. If you're Mm -hmm. using a long wool, those long wool fibers are very much more dense than, Mm -hmm. than a, a, I don't know, like a a merino or something. And then silk makes a difference because the density of silk is not quite the same. So if you have blends, but overall you can use those kind of as a guide, those amounts of yardage per four ounces as kind of a guideline. And the, the one that I just finished has, Bam- well, it's it's Targi and Baby Doll South Down, mm-hmm. but then it also has Silk, Bamboo, Alpaca. Yeah. yeah. I think that was it. I can't remember. Um, yeah. So you have to kind of be careful that you just use that kind of as a as a guide and then... And then the real proof is like what you were talking about. You looked at the gauge of the thing you knit with it. Mm-hmm. And that gauge is a worsted gauge or it's a DK gauge or, you know. Yeah. So that's, I mean, when you get right down to it. And then wraps per inch. I find mm-hmm. a lot of times when people do wraps per inch, they have a tendency to, like, squish things together too much. Yes. And so, and I and I think, you know, part of it is because thin spinning is like the holy grail. Mm-hmm. And it's really not. I mean, there's nothing inherently better about spinning finer or spinning thicker, right? Mm-hmm. It depends on what you want. But people want to spin thinner, so then they, when they do their wraps per inch, they kind of have wishful thinking about how many wraps they can get in an inch, and they squish them together too much. Mm-hmm. And then they, they think it's fingering weight when it's really not, or... You know, it's not going to knit up as a fingering weight. Well, like my baby doll south down that I made those socks out of, mm-hmm. I did actually think that was fingering weight. And then I tried to knit it with size zero needles and it didn't work at all. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I think I, I wasn't honest with myself about about the grist of that yarn. Yeah. Um. So, and, and then also if you, when you do wraps per inch, if you wrap them tighter, you know, you're stretching the yarn and making right. it thinner right so you have to be kind of careful about about what size your yarn is and not really invest yourself in what size it is until you actually swatch with it yeah and then you know right yeah (laughs) then it becomes clear okay i can't use this size of needles with this size of yarn i have to Mm -hmm. use these other size of needles yeah so i have another spinning project before i talk about that though because we may go on a while about my next spinning project oh okay. just i want to say i cast on a sweater a cardigan um holy comfort by hinterm stein and i'm using the elemental effects cormo and it's oh, nice. uh sport weight and that's it's that's the coral color the coral yarn? color yeah. yeah yeah and um i i will say after knitting with the linen it feels really nice to get back to wool. Mm-hmm. And um, so I've been knitting on, while I was knitting on the linen, I was been knitting on the wool socks, but the combination of wool and larger needles feels really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So Kelly, my last project I just wanted to talk about was spinning cotton. Ooh, exciting. Yes, I'm excited about this. So um, I started spinning a little bit of it. It's, you know, pretty short staple. What is it, like an inch? Uh huh. Inch and a half, maybe. I don't know. It's quite challenging. We, I called you. I think in between the last time we record, we recorded. I had called you to ask you some about some techniques, mm-hmm. and um, said put it on the the dry band on the smallest whirl. Here's my problem, though. If I do that, the band is too long. So I. What I need to do is is make it shorter. I guess cut and make it shorter, and I haven't been brave enough to do that. Oh, okay. so I just started spinning on the the next size mm-hmm. up, um, and just trying to treadle fast. <laughs> I think this is the way to do it, but that's how I'm doing it. Um, I've also discovered you have to have the um, the um, I'm sorry the is it the um, Dutch break with the 
Oh, the, the Scotch tension. Scotch tension Dutch break. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of uh, Tommy's Dutch lunch in Walla Walla. I wonder if that's yeah. still there. <laughs> yeah. um, mm. The Scotch, Scotch tension. tension. Uh, you have to have that really, really loose. Yeah. It can't pull in no. too fast or t- hard because it just completely pulls apart. Mm-hmm. So, and that could be not getting enough twist in it. So, between, t- I think between loosening it up qu- a lot and letting it um, treadle more before I let it feed in mm-hmm. to the onto the bob, and I think I'm doing better. Okay, and yeah. you, you'd also said to uh, don't do the pinch and into worm type thing. Just let it uh, mm-hmm. um, draw in, and and so I've been fluffing up the fiber and holding it like a baby bird. Uh-huh. Isn't that what you said? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I pretend like I have a baby bird in my hand. Um, so that's how I've been doing it. All right. Um, do you have think you I noticed? Sh- have you noticed? Have you tried doing it like from one direction, like turning the fiber, like letting oh, it feed no, I- out from one end or another, the other end, to see which end? Uh, works no, better? I have not because it's all wound into a ball. Okay. So I was just assuming I should pull it from that end. But what I think I'm going to do is tonight, after we finish recording this evening, I'll break a piece off. And try it from the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Try it from the other end because there definitely is like a nap. Mm-hmm. I do remember you cotton. saying that. Yeah, and and you might be on, the, you might be going in the right direction, the easiest direction, but you might not be, and so that will help you, um, just help you learn which is the right, because it's mm-hmm. not always wound in the. I, I mean, I'm not. You can't tell by looking, so I'm not sure how they would wind it knowing which direction. Yeah. You you have to kind of experiment. Yeah. Yes, I had forgotten that you had told me that. But so it sounds like you're that. doing it sounds like you're doing all the things you do when you first start learning cotton and you're kind of getting those techniques down. That's good. I've been practicing holding the cotton in my left hand like a baby bird mm-hmm. and holding my beer in my right hand. <laughs> So you can't touch it. I can't fiddle. touch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or my coffee or my tea or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or my glass mm-hmm. of water. So. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So I'll yeah. report in. Um, I have, I don't even know how many ounces it is. It's a, about a five inch diameter ball of roving. So I don't know. I should. Oh, weigh yeah. It. How, you how probably have, have about eight ounces. Oh, okay. I, I, that would be my guess. That should give you quite a bit of yardage. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, cool. Uh, so anyway, but that, since we've been talking about all the spinning, that leads us now to, we have to just talk about our summer spin-in. Mm-hmm. So we have some exciting news. Let's talk about this. Yeah. So um, just as a reminder, the summer spin-in started in May, May 25th, continues until September 7th, which for those of us in the U.S. is Labor Day, but for people who are not in the U.S., that makes no sense at all Mm -hmm. Um, so september 7th is the end date um, and we have two threads for finished objects and we're going to have prizes we have some some prizes coming which are super exciting Mm -hmm. Um, so it's three green sisters and they are bag makers and uh, they make these really darling bags from recycled, upcycled, repurposed, vintage, and rescued fabrics is what they say. Mm-hmm. They have many sources to obtain their fabrics, including a fabric shop in New York City, which they are allowed to dumpster dive. I think this mm. is cute. Um, for remnants, um, upholstery, and uh, drapery making shops who save their scraps. They get their fabrics from yard sales, estate sales, secondhand shops. They have really cute fabrics. Mm-hmm. Um, their website, I've been sort of lurking on their web, lurking around on their website, looking at their bags. <laughs> um, and, and they make project bags, but they also make spinning wheel and loom bags. So I think that's, that's really exciting um, that they have all these different bags. But they've donated um, prizes for, the, our, for our uh, thread for our finished Mm -hmm. object threads for our spin in. And they also have a 
coupon code for us, a discount code. I know. This is very cool. And it's very kind of them to do this. Yeah. So do, why don't we walk people through what they need to do to okay. take advantage? Yeah. So the, um, the discount code is to use T W O E W E S all caps. And the discount code on their website, their website is www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash three, the number green sisters. And this will be in the show notes and then we'll also put it in our Ravelry thread. So on that website, the two use coupon code will get our listeners a 15% savings for any bag in the shop with free shipping in the U S yes. Super exciting. I I'm, I'm really looking forward to, um, I think I'm going to take advantage of their coupon code because they have some really cute, really cute. They're in Portland, but they have, I'm just looking at their shop right now and they have all these really interesting fabrics, some like Mm seventies graphics and one that, Looks like it's a embroidered upholstery fabric mm-hmm. with some flowers on it. And they have different shapes and sizes of bags, large and small. They have totes for a spinning wheel. So like for a Kiwi or Ashford, um, large spinning wheel tote and uh, different project bags, different sizes. So anyway, very cool i would encourage our listeners to take a peek at their shop that's etsy.com slash shop slash three green sisters mm-hmm. and um, the coupon code is to use t-w-o-e-w-e-s all caps if you're interested in purchasing something from their shop and then i'll uh, i'll post the link to in the fo thread so people can see uh, what they might be in for if they if they win the drawing. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and what else do we have here, Kelly, that we need to talk about? I think. Oh, I wanted to mention about our shop. Um, mm-hmm. Mentioned it in the last episode, but just to remind people that we now have the replenish Rambouillet in three different weights: uh, the fingering that we had had before a sport weight and an iron weight. So uh, we have some, some different uh, variety of weights and some uh, new colors in the shop. If you haven't looked since the last episode when we, or if you didn't look during the last episode, there's some new colors um, in the shop. And then we also have a silver gray Romney yarn and a white, a uh, Corydale Rommeldale cross. Both of these were milled at Valley Oak Wool, Wool Mill by Markale. And these are Aaron to bulky weight. Um, I was just, I've swatched with both of these. The, the Romney so delicious, Marsha. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this is so pretty. When I swatched at first, I swatched with size nine needles. And I was getting that. It's, it's a pretty highly twisted yarn. Mm-hmm. And so I was getting that like one leg of the knit stitch kind of going in a straight line mm-hmm. with size nine. It, once I washed it, it's not super noticeable. You most, it's more like a V. Mm-hmm. But then I swatched with tens and it's like the yarn just kind of went, ah, oh, this is the size I need <laughs> to be. Because it just, once I washed it, it just relaxed into those nice little V's and Mm -hmm. the drape of it is nice and it's silky and smooth. And anyway, it's beautiful. I am, it's about three and a half stitches per inch. This Mm -hmm. is my gauge. This will not be your gauge necessarily on a size 10. Um, So I think that's qualifies as probably more than Aaron more like bulky, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I haven't looked it up. And again, it will, you know, your gauge will vary depending on your, your own knitting. And then I've swatched with the Corydale Rommeldale. And I started again with the nine size nines and it was really rolling mm-hmm. 
even though I did the border edge. Um, and so then I expanded to size 10 needle. And again, it just has room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I haven't washed this swatch yet, so so I don't fully know what it's going to do, but and I'm really liking both of them. So they're about the same gauge, I believe. Okay. They seem to be about the same. Uh, maybe the Corydale Rommeldale is a little smaller gauge, but it does also like the size 10 needles. Mm -hmm. So it might give you a sm little smaller gauge with the size 10s, but it, it's comfortable in that, at least for my knitting. Mm -hmm. So anyway, those yarns are also available as natural colors right now. We will have some of them um, dyed uh, a little later. I, I, yeah, I don't know when that'll happen, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's, that's in the plan to dye some of that yarn as well, but it's beautiful in its natural colors. So if anybody is interested in supporting our show and getting some yarn in return, take a look at our shop to use fiberadventures.com. Okay. That's nice. All right. Well, with that, should we say goodbye then? Yes. All right. Let's do Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you in two weeks. Yes, bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit tousefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing, doing our, our part, part for, for World, World Fleece. Fleece.